variance of the error term of a particular regression is non-constant. And one way of detecting this major violation is using the PARC test. Now, the PARC test assumes that the heterostatic variance behaves as a multiplicative function of itself and the independent variable to the power of beta 1 and e to the power of mu, which is, of course, the error term. Now, I'm going to demonstrate how you can do this. Of course, initially, you have to linearize, and that leads to our very um, regression, which enables us to perform this test, but you can look into that elsewhere. So I've got a generic set of data. This is basic price of chocolate and the quantity demanded. I'm going to go ahead and perform the regression here, of course, our price being the independent variable. So I'm just going to select my y variable being the quantity demanded and I'm going to select my x variable being the price of chocolate. I've got that selected. I'm going to ensure I've selected labels and residuals because we're going to require those. And that's been generated for me and they have got my result. And as you can see here, I've got my coefficients, my intercept, and I've recorded that function right here for us. So if we head back, now I've got my residuals here, and I've got that very same information here. All that's different is I've got a few labels as well I've added in here. So what I'm going to do here in this very column is, of course, as I've indicated, square my residuals. So I'm just going to select that and I'm going to square it and of course I'm going to copy it all the way through to ensure I've got all my data squared. Now I'm going to perform the log of the squaring of the residuals that I just performed. Bit of a tongue twister and I'm going to copy that all the way through. I want to bring my original data, which is the price of chocolate, into this column right here. So let me go ahead and copy that from the uh, data set on the first page. And I'm going to just paste those values in here. I'm then going to take the log of those prices that I've just copied and pasted, and I'm going to also duplicate that all the way. So now we've got a lot more to work with. Now what you're going to see is that I've highlighted the log price of chocolates and log of the residual because I'm going to now perform a regression where I use my log of the residual squared as the y or dependent variable and the log of the price of chocolate as the x or explanatory independent variable. So I'm going to go ahead and perform that regression. Um, in this case, I don't need the residuals. As I said, this is my y and my x. I'm going to input that as well. There we go. And there we go, there's my regression where I've now of course regressed the log of the residual squared on the log of the original price. And I've recorded that right here, as you can see. Log of the residual squared, log of price. Now what we've got to do to perform the PARC test is perform a simple t-test. Of course, the null hypothesis, the coefficient right here being equivalent to zero. Alternatively, you could use the variance of error term co being constant as the null hypothesis. We're going to perform a two-tailed t-test. We go ahead to our uh, t-tables. We find our t-critical. We're using our n minus k and a level of significance of 5%. We find our t-observed by, of course, taking this coefficient right here and dividing it by standard error and that gives us this negative 0 0.233. We can definitely see that this is within range of these two numbers and so we definitely fail to reject H0 in this particular instance 
and you can conclude that the error variance is in fact constant and so it is not heteroscedastic.